Welcome to Motorock Technology. Today we're going to talk about a brand new technology and an innovation for protocol development and freeze drying. That innovation is called the micro freeze dryer. The micro freeze dryer is designed to enable you to analyze your existing protocol by putting in your existing protocol parameters and it will generate the critical process parameter data for you which creates a baseline of your understanding of your existing uh, protocol, uh, protocol dynamics. Once you've done that, you can then go into optimizing the cycle and we give you the tools necessary to change your freezing cycles and your primary drying cycles to develop the shortest freeze drying time and to, to develop the critical process parameters associated with those that you can use for transfer. So once you've developed all these critical process parameters, you've optimized your cycle, you have a full understanding of the critical process parameters, you can then transfer the cycle to larger systems. And you can do all this with anywhere from three to 37 vials. Things that you can see in using this technology that you can't see in other systems are we can tell you how much the product is frozen, how much is frozen during nucleation, we can see the end of freezing, essentially when the product has become stable and you can move on to primary drying. So no longer do you have to wait for a time-based uh, a time-based event. In primary drying, we collect critical process parameters, including biothermal conductivity, otherwise known as KV, cake resistance, otherwise known as RP, sublimation mass flow, percent dry, product temperature, shelf temperature, vacuum level, and we can also determine the end of primary drying. These screens that you see here are screens that are dynamically updated during the process continuously. Once you've analyzed your existing process, you can start to optimize both the freezing and primary drying uh, portions of your, of your protocol. This is extremely unique. Most systems only focus on the primary drying side. However, with the technologies that we provide, you can adjust your sh shelf cooling rates, you can add annealing, you can add controlled nucleation, and you can do something that nobody else can do is control nucleation with post, uh, what we call post-nucleation heat flow, where we can actually control the crystal growth after nucleation. This is important because during nucleation, only about 10% of the available water uh, creates ice crystals. So 90% of the freezing takes place post-nucleation. In primary drying, we can determine the end of primary drying automatically using the pressure differential between the capacitance phenomena and the Pirani. And we can do closed loop temperature control, which we call auto dry, where we will control the, the shelf temperature based on the product temperature and maintain the product temperature below its critical point, thus optimizing the primary drying cycle. Here, uh, here's an example of the heat flow during a freezing process. This red line here is the heat flow, which would be similar to what you would see in a DSC, where the heat flow uh, is, uh, increases pretty dramatically, in this case, in the negative direction because we're freezing. Uh, and then comes up and stabilizes out. And once it stabilizes out, we can uh, we know that we're done free uh, with a super cooling effect in this case. Uh, what we were doing is going to minus five degrees, stabilizing, and then doing a controlled nucleation event. So we wait for the stabilization at minus five and boom, we do our controlled nucleation. We get a pretty dramatic heat flow uh, increase at that point. And as the product uh, cools down, we can then control our heat flow by controlling the shelf, te shelf temperature. So here's a good example of the heat flow effect during uh, supercooling, during controlled nucleation, and then the controlling the heat flow post-nucleation. And so this gives us the, the uniformity across the batch and inside the vial. We then go into a primary drying uh, cycle. And in the primary drying cycle, we were using auto dry. You can see that the shelf temperature goes up and slowly decreases but the temperature of the product maintains below the critical temperature set point that we set. So we have this optimized cycle with a uh, actually an accelerate, not an accelerated, but an aggressive cycle in the beginning where we raise the shelf temperature uh, and we keep the, the product temperature below its critical temperature. Uh, during this process, we do periodic drops in vacuum and that vacuum, the drop in vacuum tells us whether the thermocouples are still in ice. Uh, as long as they're in ice, we can use them for temperature control. Once they're out of ice, we stop using the, those particular thermocouples. So this is the, just a quick example of um, the type of information you can see during the run. 
Here's an example of where we've done a case study using sucrose. We used a standard cycle where we froze the product to minus 40 at half a degree C per minute, and then went into primary drying. We held the shelf, shelf temperature constant and the pressure constant, uh, and we had a pretty long primary drying time. We then stepped through the different uh, available options in freezing from controlled nucleation to controlled nucleation with heat flow. And then the last step here, we went controlled nucleation with heat flow control after controlled nucleation and using auto dry to control the product temperature close to but less than the critical temperature. And you can see we reduced the um, primary drying time by over 50 percent. Case two was with an actual protein. This was a 21 mil fill in a 50 mil vial. The original process was developed using uh, a, an older uh, technology provided by some, some other company, uh, and they produced a very conservative run of about 121 hours. Uh, we then uh, implemented the controlled nucleation, controlled heat flow, and auto, and auto dry on this particular cycle, and we reduced the cycle to 54 hours. This is a 55% reduction in primary drying time, gave us a, a cake structure that was visually acceptable, and a and an acceptable moisture, residual moisture content. So these are just two quick examples how to optimize the cycle. For scale up and transfer, the, the goal is to maintain an equivalent product temperature or a thermal history between the, the lab unit or the, the source unit, which, we can, uh, which is the lab, and your commercial process, which would typically be production. To transfer a protocol, there are two, uh, two uh, consistent methods that people use is keep the shelf temperature the same. Once you develop something in the lab, you can keep the shelf temperature the same in, in production, keep the chamber pressure the same, and just add time to the primary drying cycle. This is pretty typical, uh, adding like 30% to the primary drying time uh, once you've developed an acceptable protocol in the lab. Another way to do it is to actually adjust the shelf temperature based on the, the known KV values for the source in the lab and the target in production. Uh, here's a quick equation showing uh, the temperature of the shelf uh, and how that's adjusted based on KV of the two. Uh, I'm not going to go into the detail on this, but it, it will show an actual example. So uh, just a visual on this, if we have our micro freeze dryer here, uh, we develop the critical process parameter KV, we know what the shelf temperature is and these other parameters from the source. We then look at our target system and we can produce the shelf temperature needed to produce the same cycle in the target system. Vial, the vial heat transfer coefficient uh, is a pretty efficient way to transfer a cycle and produce the same primary drying results. There are two ways to, to uh, determine KV uh, in a freeze dryer. One is using our method called AccuFlux, where we're actually using a heat flow sensor to measure the uh, heat flow going into the product and therefore directly are measuring the KV. The other way is to do it gravimetrically. Gravimetrically would be a quick run where uh, you stop the process about 25% into the run, measure gravimetrically the amount of material lost, and calculate uh, KV uh, across the batch. Typically, there's a batch average because your, your edge vials are running different than your, um, than your center vials. And uh, you use that type of uh, value to for your transfer. So here's a quick example of the process time or process differences between a micro freeze dryer and a Revo, which was an eight square foot freeze dryer. We have a heat flow pattern here for the micro freeze dryer, which is the black line here. And we have the product temperature uh, line here in the micro freeze dryer. And we ran a system at zero degrees C, 100 millitor. I believe this was a mannitol run. And this is the profile we got. We ran the same protocol in, a, in the eight square foot freeze dryer. And you'll notice that the heat flow was lower for the center vials. And the center vials were running at a lower temperature. So this would be, if we just transferred this from the micro freeze dryer to the Revo, all we would have to do is extend the primary drying time. And we have a very conservative cycle uh, going, in, going between the systems. But let's say we don't want to do that. We actually want to produce a cycle that runs faster. First off, we would have to add about 30% time to the cycle in, in a larger system to uh, allow primary drying to be completed. But when we want to increase uh, the, the speed or basically duplicate the, um, uh, the process times between two systems, 
we again have the, stand, the baseline here on the microfreeze dryer. And what we did is we, we calculated uh, that we could raise the shelf temperature approximately 4 degrees C uh, in the Revo. And we, we ran that system, uh, and this is what we got. The heat flow was almost identical between the two systems at that point, just by raising the shelf temperature 4 degrees. The product temperature was slightly higher than the, in the Revo than it was in the, in the uh, micro freeze dryer. So maybe we were a little too aggressive by going to 0.4. If we'd gone to 0.3, we would have had an exact same thermal history between the two systems. This is significant because it means that we could take the protocol developed in the, in the laboratory and transfer it into production and get the same results. Uh, we determined the end of primary drying for, the, for this uh, process using the capacitance manometer versus the prony. You can see here that the primary drying times were within minutes of each other between the two systems. That's pretty incredible. So the sublimation rates and heat transfer were similar uh, between the two machines when we changed the shelf temperature in the target system. This res resulted in a similar processing time. So testing uh, new products can now be done with, uh, with anywhere between three, uh, three and 37 vials, uh, and we can use that information for transfer. What is the micro freeze dryer? Uh, this is a picture of the micro freeze dryer here. It's a very small system that allows you to put a small batch in here. Uh, we've run this system and have really enjoyed uh, the dynamics of protocol development using a small batch. It's much simpler, much easier, much more user friendly than it is trying to produce uh, the results using a large batch uh, of vials in a uh, like a six or eight square foot freeze dryer. The micro freeze dryer is set up for, for all this, the same operating performance as larger systems, including an external uh, condenser with pneumatic isolation valve, Pirani capacitance manometer, proportional vacuum control. And we also have our AccuFlux technology in here. Uh, this ring here is called the Lyosim ring. This is what's used to simulate surrounding vials that aren't there in a small batch. We tried cooling the walls. It didn't work. Uh, the radiation is not the major effect that creates um, the edge vial effect. It's actually the, the heat sink effect of, effect of a sublimating vial that creates the, the lack of uh, heat sink from a sublimating vial that's on the outside that creates the edge effect. So this ring here basically is simulating the sublimation effect or heat sink effect of vials that would normally be on the outside. Uh, the last sim ring is shown here. It can be used for uh, simulating center vials or edge vials. Uh, if we run the last sim ring uh, based on the product temperature and we track the product temperature, uh, with the Lyosim ring, we simulate center vials. If we run the Lyosim ring above the product temperature and make it look like uh, the corral that would normally be there, we can simulate edge vials. Very powerful tool. Uh, the beauty of this is when you're simulating center vials, we get a very uniform distribution across the batch, uh, almost exactly what you would get uh, for center vials in any batch. Don't forget, uh, center vials are all the vials except for the outer two to three rows. The outer two to three rows um, run at a uh, higher sublimation rate than the center vial. So what we have the ability to do here is, is actually um, simulate the 95, 98% of the vials that, um, that are center vials. In summary, we, uh, we demonstrate that the micro FD is a true PAT system uh, using as few as even three vials, but in most cases we're using seven vials. It is real time and in situ unlike any other process and it works in both freezing and primary drying. It accurate, accurately measures all the critical process parameters. It provides all the tools necessary for analysis and optimization and certainly for transfer. We also offer this technology in, uh, in this case, in six to eight square foot systems and up to 20 square foot systems. Uh, this, is, this external module here is a freeze booster module that can be added to any freeze dryer for controlled nucleation. Thank you for your time. We look forward to working with you and your development, uh, protocol development needs.